It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Black Lives Matter has decided to stand with the Cuban government. Now before I talk about the topic, I have two things to say in regards to this whole entire thing. The first thing, obviously, of course, is to check out the podcast that I did with k Possible Podcast, where pretty much we summarize a great deal about what's happening in Cuba. Of course, the whole entire podcast is an hour long, so if you guys are interested in seeing the podcast, check out the links in the description box down below. And number two, I'm not necessarily surprised about this whole entire ordeal with Black Lives Matter and, of course, the support for the communist government of Cuba, mostly because they openly said out loud that they were, in fact, trained Marxists. And so without further hesitation, here's the exact clip now I'm referring to. I think that it might... Um, I think of a lot of things. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super... Uh, versed um, on sort of ideological theories. Not only did one of the founders for Black Lives Matter openly stated that she was, in fact, a trained Marxist, but also there is this one photograph that's been circling across the internet where pretty much the founders of the whole entire organizations took a picture with freaking Nicolas Maduro, the dictator of Venezuela. So, it's so strange, really, really strange to me, when people act so surprised about this sort of radicalized ideologies for Black Lives Matter. Because the organization is pretty much corrupt to the core and inherently Marxist to the core because literally the boss, the people behind the movement said that they are in fact trained Marxists, took pictures for Nicolas Maduro, so no. I am not surprised about their own personal decision. So let's read out loud about the whole entire statement because obviously it's gonna get juicy, guys. It's just gonna get really, really juicy. Black Lives Matter condemns the US federal government's inhumane treatment of Cubans and urges it to immediately lift the economic embargo. This cruel and inhumane policy instituted with the explosive intention of destabilizing the country and undermining the Cubans' rights to choose their own government is at the heart of Cuba's current crisis. Since 1962, the U.S. has forced pain and suffering onto the people of Cuba by cutting off food, medicines, and supplies, costing the tiny island nation an estimate $130 billion. Now that we explicitly know that Black Lives Matter is openly Marxist, both in the people that they support, as well as what they said outside their mouth, we know for a fact, of course, that this whole entire thing about the U.S. embargo stuff is very much ironic. Why is it ironic, you guys probably ask. The main reason why I say it's ironic is because they're saying out loud that Cuba, a communist country, cannot survive without capitalist America. That to me is ironic to me. Like they're saying that communism admittedly does not work, yet they're Marxists. And of course this whole entire logic, you know, gets thrown out the window too, because one of the people behind Black Lives Matter actually bought various mansions, and yet she calls herself a freaking Marxist. So, any kind of consistency for Black Lives Matter is pretty much just gone. Another thing I want to note out is that Cuba has like 190 trading partners in the entire world. Among them, of course, is like Spain, as well as Canada, and China, and Russia. You're telling me, with over like 190 trading partners across the whole entire globe, that they somehow decide to keep the food because they don't necessarily care about the people? Never mind for a fact, of course, like the Cuban government have been actively oppressing its own people. And it's kind of funny, too, that they said 
that Cuba has a right to self-determination. The people in Cuba did not vote for the government that they currently have for the last 62 years. Not at all. As a matter of fact, the whole entire situation in Cuba like started like in the late 50s, like 59 through the 60s, right? When the, the whole entire government was overtaken by Castro. And so, because of Castro, because of Che Guevara, right? They implemented communism across the whole entire country. And so the people literally cannot choose the people that's like in office. People are dying because of the Cuban government. People are starving because of the actions of the Cuban government. To blame everything on the United States does not help out. I mean, think about it. Cuba could buy entire freaking yachts. Yet, for some strange reason, does not prioritize, you know, the whole entire concern for its citizens. You're telling me this is like the United States' fault too? That they buy, like, entire yachts for their own freaking money? Also, according to the news, Cuba actually allows free exportations recently of food and medicines to travelers who go there. So, between Cuba actually allowing travelers to import food from their own freaking countries as well as the fact that the Cuban people are not even actually eating because the people in the government are literally buying yachts and stuff do you really think that the whole entire thing is largely United States fault I mean like I said earlier Cuba could buy their own freaking yachts yet don't give a damn about the people there so this whole entire United States fault, I don't necessarily buy for one single second. The people of Cuba are being punished by the U.S. government because the country has maintained its commitment to sovereignty and self-determination. Again, what self-determination from the Cuban people? What self-determination? Cuba has historically demonstrated solidarity with oppressed people of African descent from protecting black revolutionaries like Assad Shikar through granting her asylum to supporting black liberation struggles in other African countries. It is so ironic to me how they said that the black people are protected by the Cuban government and that people like Sada Shikar are examples. Now first and foremost, Asada Shikar is a cop killer. Like she was actually in jail and then she actually freaking escaped to go to Cuba for that whole entire thing and to this very day is part of the FBI most wanted list. And also, it's so funny because the Cuban government is pretty much well known for their hatred of like, you know, black people. Because people like Castro, people like, you know, Che Guevara, they openly, openly just hated black people. The blacks, those magnificent examples of the African race, who are maintaining racial purity thanks to the laugh of an infirmity with bathing has seen their territory invaded by a new kind of slave, the Portuguese. It is just so weird to me, like the biggest supporters, the biggest sympathizers of the whole entire Cuban regime are the same sort of people that they probably, you know, have, of course, the bullet shot back at them by the whole entire government because basically to them, these type of people are the useful idiots. And so, when I see people who call themselves progressive and very liberal, while at the same time, of course, wearing these sort of Che Guevara shirts, even though Che Guevara freaking, you know, hated gay people, hated black people. Oh my God, I don't even know what I just did right now, so pardon the whole entire interruption right here, but I just don't understand how these sort of people like, you know, support these kind of people. Now we look to President Biden to end the embargo, something Barack Obama called for in 2016. This embargo is a blatant human rights violation and it must come to an end. So there you go, folks. Everything's United States fault. Nothing's Cuba's fault because apparently Black Lives Matter just matters in the hands of the police in the United States. But for some strange reason, when there's literally a police state in Cuba killing everybody and of course going after those that criticize the government, well you see, those lives don't matter as much as our lives. 
Because we're in the States, and so the States' lives matter. I just really hate the hypocrisy for this movement. I just really, really do. But what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.